Hello everyone, myself Kunal Mangkodia. I head wearable biosensing lab at the University of Rhode Island. We have designed pulse band and here in this tutorial we would like to show you how to design your own pulse band. What is pulse band? Pulse band is a wrist worn a heart rate monitoring device. And here in this picture we show you our own pulse band. Essentially, we use uh, various components to collect heart rate data and communicate that data to smartphone and smartphone conveys that data to the cloud for longitudinal data uh, database. Now, how does pulse band work? We use pulse sensor, uh, which is a commercial sensor. Uh, available at pulsesensor.com and pulse oximetry principle is being used to collect heart rate data. LED and photo detector are placed next to each other in this sensor and LED throws out light inside the skin and into the tissue. The light gets scattered and reflected back to the photo detector. On the photo detector uh, you get the information in various ways. So here in the right side you see another diagram and uh, you you see incident light and absorbed light and then you see a pulsating signal. That pulsating si signal is uh, arterial blood information and here you see if you can calculate peak to peak time distance in this pulsating signal you would be able to measure heart rate. So let us show you how to design pulse band. There are several steps to follow. First, you would need to have hardware and firmware. You need to design your own pulse band using 3D printer. And lastly, you need to test your device. So before I go ahead, I would like to give opportunity to Nick Constant, who is a developer of pulse band. Thank you. Hi guys, so let's get started with making our pulse band. Then we've broken down into six easy steps. First, we'll set up the nano to your computer. We'll then program the nano for the pulse band. We'll then connect the pulse sensor and the battery to the nano. We'll then print the housing and the strap for the pulse band. We'll assemble it all together and then we'll test those results. So let's get started. First up is the hardware and the firmware. All of the files that I'm about to use can be found here at this link. It is going straight to our Google Drive folder. So let's understand the pulse sensor a little more as far as hardware is concerned. So we have the pulse sensor, of course, but we also have some filtering and amplifying to give us a nice little output that looks like that. On our schematics, the pulse sensor will be viewed, will be signified as that little symbol. On the back is where all the circuitry is found. We have the LED, which feeds into, which optically feeds into the photo detector. The output of the photo detector is put through a bandpass filter, which is then that output is amplified, and that's given to our nano. The nano itself has a great little Bluetooth smart system on a chip from Nordic Semiconductors. It has plenty of space as far as uh, flash. It has nice timers, analog in, digital in, and out, of course. Um, and of course, Bluetooth Smart, which is great for our low power application. This board can be powered, uh, or at least in our application, it's going to be powered with 3.7 volts using the VN. And then we will use VDD, which will output 3.3 volts to our pulse sensor. So in order to hook up the nano to your computer, we're gonna need a middleman. And our middleman is the MK20 USB board, which is also supplied by Red Bear Labs. In order to hook up the nano to the computer, you must solder the nano to the MK20 board. Note that there's an extra pin between the USB port and the nano. 
make sure to keep it all the way back or else the nano will get very hot. Now, let's install the driver so that way your computer recognizes that this is an embed device. Then we'll set you up with an account. You can go to this link and set up your account. Once you're all set up, we'll have the nano connected to a computer. We'll go over to the disk drive that pops up when the nano gets plugged in. And we'll notice that there's an embed HTML file. Open that up with the browser that you're signed into the embed account. When you when you do that, the nano will then be linked to your profile. So it should look like this when all is said and done. And then when you go to the embed compiler, on the top right you can select which device you want to use. Once you select your device, let's program it. We've supplied all of the code and it can be found using either of these links. This will be our repository. You can download it and then view it at your leisure. But for right now, we'll go through it uh, quickly. So here I broke down the fact that it's open source, tell you what some of the variables are dealing with the call center. And then I tell you, to, I will tell you what uh, BLE services have been used. I will use heart rate, battery, and health thermometer. Just note that the battery is just giving you a loop of values between 80 and 100, and then it'll just loop back to 80. And the health thermometer is actually just giving you the temperature of the silicon dye within the nano. In case you do. In case you do want to debug, there is that option. However, the Nano has to be plugged in to the computer uh, via the MK20, and that option is available to you as well. Next, we'll set up our services. Um, here you can see that the values that we'll be putting into them are unsigned 8-bit integers, and also the device name is called Pulse Glasses not pulse band. Um, I just kept this from an older project I was working on. So now that we have everything initialized, we'll go into the main function and there we'll set up what's called a ticker. The ticker is basically an interrupt handler. Um, we'll use that to call a function called periodic callback. And what that does is that will tell us to check on the pulse sensor every two milliseconds. It'll also blink a nice little LED light for us. Um, after we do that and set that up, we'll then check to see if it needs to be debugged. We will initialize our Bluetooth services, initialize all of our other services, and then set up our advertising. So here we go. We're in the main loop. This will never end, and what it does is it will check to see if it's been two milliseconds and also if our BLE device is connected. Um, if that's all true, we'll try to update our services. So we'll update our heart rate service only if there's a beat, a new beat detected. And it can't even be the first beat, it has to be the second beat. It's detected two consecutive beats qualifies as a beat. Um, if we do not detect a beat, we will send a heart rate of zero. Otherwise, we're just going to wait for an event. So in that periodic callback function that I mentioned earlier, we'll start off, we'll blink our LED, we'll read our value from the pulse sensor, we'll then normalize it to 512 or zero between those values, um, and then we'll set our trough and our peak. Let's see. All right, so now we got to check to see, okay, is it first or second beat? Those were found. Okay, and now let's calculate our BPMs. In order to do that, we're going to average out 10 IBI values. An IBI value is the time between two beats. So that being said, we cannot use a first beat to check for it.
Okay, so at this point we will then adapt our thresholds, our peaks and our troughs according to uh, what we're actually getting from the pulse sensor. Some signals are weaker and some signals are stronger than others, so we want to adapt our code such that it works regardless of what how strong the signal is that's coming in. Now that everything's working, you can cl click compile. It'll download this hex file to your computer. That hex file, you just want to drag and drop that into the embed disk. Once it's in the embed disk, the nano will reset really quickly. It'll come back up and you will no longer see the hex file in your nano. That means everything worked. If you see the hex file, that means it is not properly programmed and something went wrong. So just go back and check. Now, to build the hardware, we do not need the MK20 anymore. So let's desolder that and make the Nano a standalone device yet again. We're going to hook up the pulse sensor again, power to VDD, ground to ground, and our signal is going to go to analog in P06. Our battery will then be hooked up to V in, and it will share the same ground as the pulse sensor. Make sure that the pulse sensor's wires are between one and one and a quarter inches. You want to lean on the one inch side uh, just because the housing compartment it sits in is a very snug fit and any extra wire is just going to cause some struggle. So if you do have a rechargeable coin cell battery, you can buy the MCP73832 uh, IC and then you can use it in the circuit as you see and then you will now have a rechargeable pulse band. Ours is actually rechargeable. Um, so here's what the final product as far as hardware goes looks like. We have our charging on the right, nano on the left, and then at the bottom you can see we have the battery holder with the pulse sensor and those two are isolated from one another by a couple of layers of electrical tape. Okay, now to the fun stuff, or different, but fun stuff, 3D printing. Okay, so we start, we'll have the strap, which must be a soft strap, that way it's flexible around the wrist. We use our Ninja Flex filament, and then a hard clip for the strap, and a hard housing compartment for our hardware. clip goes on the left side of the band and the housing compartment will slide underneath the large block on the strap. Final assembly includes putting the nano into the housing and the housing into the strap. So in order to verify our results we can use the iOS light blue or the Android BLE scanner for Android. Our choice was the light blue because we're using an iPhone device. So let's check out what it would look like on our phone if everything was working. First we open up the app, Bluetooth low energy or the Bluetooth from the phone. We'll try to pair with the pulse band. It'll interrogate it and out comes all of our services. You can scroll through, go to your heart rate measurement. If you want, you can listen for some notifications. And then as it updates, you'll see new heart rate values. Right now, they're shown in hex, so you don't see too much information from that. However, at the bottom, there's a log, and then you can um, output that to a text file and use it later. Here's a nice little YouTube video, which you can find online.
Okay. So thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy building your own pulse band. Um, if you do in the future or you use it for any research or you use any of this information in your research, please cite us uh, in your publication. Uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this conference.